Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Color roll, please. Gary Farley. Here. Amber Brown. Here. Jerry Sartain. Here. Joe Machado. Here. William Harper. Here. Renee Curtis. Here. Zane Cantrell. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, you have the June 10th minutes of our last meeting. Are there any changes or deletions to the minutes? Do we'll I have approved, a motion that be approved? Do we have a motion? Second. Got a second? Got a second. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley. Yes. Amber Brown. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Joe Machado. Yes. William Harper. Yes. Renee Curtis. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. In pursuant to the Governor Lee's executive order, it is necessary to conduct this meeting electronically in order to protect the health, safety, and, and welfare uh, of our community. Do I have a motion to that effect? So we have a motion by Bill. Do I have a second? We have a second. Call the roll, please. I'm sorry, who was second? Gary Farley. Yes. Amber Brown. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Joe Machado. Yes. William Harper. Yes. Renee Curtis. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. The first item of business we have is a request by Gary and, and Teresa Murray, who is requesting a variance relief on five feet from the rear yard setback. What do you have on that, please? Sorry. Okay. BZA application 2020-13 involves the property located at 1341 Lunar Drive, and it's a request for variance relief of five feet from the rear yard setback for detached accessory structures and uh, of five feet. Uh, the property is zoned residential medium. It's a 0.38 acre property, and Mr. and Ms. Re Mrs. Murray um, last year had hired a pool contractor to construct a pool upon their property. Uh, they relied on the contractor to obtain permits, which was not actually uh, executed. And they were notified later on by Consolidated Utility District that the pool encroached onto their step system property. Uh, Mr. Murray has come in and, and spoken with staff and he tried to uh, do everything to resolve this issue, uh, even uh, approaching CUD to purchase this liver of property that would make it compliant. However, uh, because CUD is a public company, they couldn't offer it, sell it off to him specifically. It would have to be done through an auction. And so they gave Mr. Murray a right to encroach uh, upon the property. and. Uh, as terms of the agreement to encroach upon the property is that if it's damaged, it can't be replaced and um, it can continue to remain, but no additional improvements can occur. Uh, and so what Mr. Murray is trying to do, because his pool contractor did not get the permits, we, we have to... Um, uh, review the variance request because the pool does go up to the property line and that's what we're considering tonight. Um, if the variance is approved, then Mr. Murray can obtain the permits, it can be inspected and be legitimate. <clears throat> if you wanna note, as you did in the earlier meeting, there are additional improvements for, on other properties that have gone into the CUD area. So staff reviewed the application, found that the request meets most of the requirements. We did not find that it was the result of the applicant's actions. Uh, he did indicate that in their contract with the contract, a pool contractor, it stated that he was supposed to obtain the permits. And I imagine the applicant will be able to expound upon that during their presentation. Uh, so these are photos of the surrounding area. We did receive one informational call. No one indicated being in favor or against uh, the request. And that concludes our presentation.
Okay, the Murrays are online. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add to that? I'm not sure if y'all can hear us. Hi. Go ahead. Or we got disconnected somehow. Sorry. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add to the report that we've received? Um, I don't think so. Um, I think we submitted everything. We missed some of what you said, but um, um, I think we submitted all the stuff we needed. Um, we appreciate you taking the time to look at this and hopefully uh, allow us to have the variance. We tried to fix it as best we could. We wanted to make it right. Okay. We have a question for you from one of our members. Okay. Uh, uh, if you would, uh, I, the the contractor that you hired, do yes. you know? Do you know uh, if it was a, a licensed contractor or an unlicensed contractor? It was a licensed contractor. We have all of the the contracts and and everything, and he he provided a license number. We didn't. I mean, we took him at his word. We don't. We and don't, we, we actually went and looked at pools that he had built, so uh, we didn't have any reason to. Uh, he was uh, recommended who, to us by someone else. Who so. was the contractor? Uh, it was uh, Murphy's Royal Pool Company, and they're no longer in business, to my knowledge. We've tried to reach them, and his name was Joel. Um, what's his last name? I can't. Um, I can't think of it. it. Starts with a P. Joel. Um, uh, Joel Passnode. Joel Patno. Pat, Pass. Is it Passno or Patno? Patno. Patno. Uh, just from friendly advice, you can contact the state of Tennessee and file a contractor's board complaint. Uh, you have that right to do that, being that you didn't get what you were told. So I'm just I'm giving you some free advice. Okay, wow. thank you. Didn't thank you. didn't know that, but thank you. Any other questions? I, I do. Danielle, you, you may be able to help. This is just out of curiosity. This contract that CUD drafted, will that follow the homeowner or is that given, is that just specific to the home? Because I wonder if they move out and someone else moves in, do they have to then go back through CUD, CUD and get another encroachment? Okay, so Bill? I believe it's recorded in public records. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that works. Thanks. Okay. Did that answer your question, Amber? Okay, Joe? No. Any other questions? We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to uh, speak on this. The lines are open. Let the record show there's no call-ins. Uh, we'll end the public hearing. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion we approve the request. Second. Have a motion to be approved. We have a second. Second. Have a second. Any further discussion? <laughs> Call the roll, please. Gary Farley. Yes. Amber Brown. Yes. Joe Machado. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. William Harper. Yes. Renee Curtis. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. Unanimous approval. Thank you so much. We really Thank appreciate you very you, much. all of you. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. The next item we have is a request by Sarah Smith, who is requesting a special exemption for a rural retreat. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 202014 involves the property at 4035 Jurgen Road. They are seeking special exception approval to allow the establishment of a rural retreat upon the property located in the RM zone. The property is a 10-acre property, and Ms. Smith uh, is seeking approval to operate a wedding venue to make available the property for weddings and events. Uh, the applicant indicates that they are seeking to host small gatherings of up to 100 guests, that events would mostly take place on the weekends, uh, with the hours being limited to 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, the events would be uh, conducted under a 30 by 40 outdoor pavilion that's open on three sides. It's 1,200 square feet. It's existing on the property, it appears, as a chapel. 
and obviously the the outdoors of the property will also be made available. They have, uh, the applicant has provided a letter from uh, the church across the street and they have an arrangement where they can utilize that parking area if needed. Now, if approved, the applicant will have to go through an administrative site plan review and demonstrate that they're meeting all of the conditions for landscaping and uh, they will have to continue, continually continually, sorry, comply with the conditions for rural retreats. And so that will be carefully monitored. Uh, we have received a phone call with concerns from an adjacent property owner that uh, was concerned about the number of events. Uh, 30 per year could allow up to two events per month. And, and with um, events being up to 100 people, that was a lot of activity. And they were kind of concerned about that. We also received two letters, and they followed up with a phone call in favor. And they were also adjacent properties or located to the rear of the property in favor of the request. And they found that the site was well maintained, and they did not foresee any problems with the proposed use. And so this is an aerial of the property property and the applicant gave an extensive amount of detail and so we attached that to the staff findings so you could uh, read that and it may answer some questions you might have had. Uh, we posted a sign on the property and the, these are photos of the surrounding area. The gated entry, you can see the chapel-like uh, structure here. Even though it appears like a enclosed building, that's the only side that I believe has a wall. And Tanya, our building official, may be able to elaborate on the structures that are on the property. I do think that they did receive a permit for the structure. And so the applicants provided kind of a, a, a rough site plan showing the location of the septic system. You can see all the existing improvements. They do have a swimming pool on the property, uh, the ponds, and the pavilion locations not represented on this, but uh, the aerial. So. Should show it. And that concludes our presentation. Okay, we have the uh, Smiths online here. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add to this? Um, well, like she said, we did provide an extensive explanation. We did our best to, to address all of the questions and go as far as we could to address the concerns that any neighbor might have. Uh, we put ourselves in their, in their shoes, really, truly. Um, and we would want to treat our neighbors as if they were family. So we have every concern uh, in keeping, you know, keeping everyone's uh, concerns at, at, at the forefront. Uh, Bill and I moved here in the fall and we did not move here with the intentions to develop a, a rural retreat or, or, you know, a wedding venue. We moved here, uh, we've been together for over five years. We moved here to be married here ourselves and uh, thought we would be the first ones to be married here. But once we moved here, uh, we had people asking us, hey, can we, as you know, friends, had friends asking us, hey, can we, uh, you know, possibly get married there? And so we started thinking, we felt so blessed to have had the opportunity to get the property that we should share it with other people. So we just thought we wanted to go, in the case that we can do that, we wanted to go through the proper channels to be able to do that. We're here to answer any questions anyone may have. Okay. We're happy. Do we have any questions, Gary? Uh, yeah, the one first question I got, are the walls going to be open or are they going to be enclosed? Completely open. The, the, and that was before we even realized what the rules were, it's completely open. Three walls open. Just the okay. front part that you can see by the doors is the only closed wall. And my next question is, is um, are you going to be serving alcohol or food in the pavilion? We're no, sir. Neither one? We're, no, sir. We don't serve anything. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, we'll open this for a public hearing at this time for anyone who would like to speak on this request. The lines are open. You can call in. 
Close the public hearing. Entertain a motion on it. I'll move to approve. Have a motion to be approved. Do we have a second? second. Got a second. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Gary Farley. Yes. Amber Brown. Yes. Joe Machado. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. William Harper. Yes. Renee Curtis. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. Unanimous approval, so go to work. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any other business that needs to come before us, we are adjourned. Thank you.